Okay, so today we're going to talk about sectionalism. We've talked about nationalism, and this is, um, it's not opposite, but it's different, but yet it's kind of the same. It's identifying with another, with a particular region of the country, okay? Um, loyalty to a particular region of the country right here. Um, we still let the states have a lot of power during this time, 1800, 1860s, we're looking at. The U.S. is still very fragile, okay? Um, you know, we don't know that our government's going to work for 200 years. You know, it's been about 50 years. So we're still kind of all new at this. Basically, there was three sections in the United States. You got the North, the South, and the West at this time. Okay, this will lead to the worst crisis ever. If you guessed it, the Civil War. Okay, sectionalism. Identifying our loyalty to a part of the country. So the North we have up first, okay. Uh, they're bound together by transportation. They have some of the most, uh, or was the most advanced as far as transportation goes. They will even have forms of mass transit, uh, trolley cars, and you'll see things like that come around. Rapid growth in commercial farming and industrial innovation, okay? We will start to see factories grow there as well. Most populated because of the high birth rate and immigration. You know, Ellis Island is right there. Uh, you know, the Statue of Liberty given to us by France. Um, you know, that's where we intake immigrants. So, you know, they didn't travel far. Not many came and went west. Now, some will, but it's pretty brave to go west. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, issues with workers' unions. Workers wanted shorter hours, more pay, and safer conditions. Child labor will be an issue at this time, too, but it won't be solved yet. Okay, uh, the Supreme Court is going to rule in favor of peaceful unions. Um, it's the Hunter Lessee trial. You don't have to know that. Um, that's very specific. Uh, the Martin Hunter Lessee trial. Uh, the rapid growth in cities are also going to mean slums. So you're going to have issues with crowded housing poor sanitation, infectious disease, and you're going to get a high crime rate, okay? 14 million immigrants will enter the United States during this time, okay? We'll talk more about immigrants here in a minute. The South, the economic system that is based on slavery to grow crops, based on treating humans as property, sickening okay um but we do have to talk about it frankly and honestly um because it did exist you know we don't agree with it okay um but this is what happened okay tobacco rice sugar cane and cotton are your main uh, crops for slavery for harvesting the cotton gin and the mechanical textile mills made cotton more affordable, so it was in higher demand, okay? It was in higher demand. So there becomes a cycle, okay? Um, slaves in the South picked the cotton, the cotton gin. The cotton gin took the seeds out of the cotton, made it easier. Then the Brits bought the Southern cotton to make clothes in their textile mills. And then everybody in the world bought the clothes from the British. And then that just cycled again and cycled again and cycled again. Only about 250,000 slaves were free. So very little. Cotton is king. That's kind of what the South is called. Cotton was two-thirds of all U.S. exports from the South. That's a lot. Okay. Okay. Um, and, you know, the Southerners, it's like they're, you know, the, North, the Northerners were trying to take away their 
well-being, their way of life when they try to take away slavery because slavery is such an intricate part of their economic system. That's that's the sad thing. Slaves become property. They're bought and sold. One million slaves in 1800, and then we're going to have four million by 1860. Now, Jefferson bans the importation of slaves, okay, the slave trade. Um, but, you know, these slaves have children, and they're smuggled in, slaves are. So, <clears throat> that's how it's going to grow. Slavery is going to be seen as an economic necessity for the South. The institution of slavery is going to hurt the South's ability to industrialize because all the money went to slaves, went to buying slaves, because that is how they um, made their money, um, was by slave labor. Okay. Um, so, and we'll see the effects of this in the Civil War you know, and in the Civil War, because the South will have no way to industrialize because they ha don't have any. Uh, wealth is determined in the South by land and slave ownership. Most slaves owner, most slave owners owned less than 20. Okay. A majority of slave owners did not own, you know, hundreds, but there were plantations. Majority of the slaves did live in a very small amount of plantations. Okay. Does that make sense? I kind of said that funny. So majority of your slaves are living in a very small population as far as the wealthy white. Okay. Um, the value of a slave was put at $2,000. That's so sad. But, you know, like I said, we have to look at it. We have to know it. Um, and we're better for it from reliving our past. Okay. Um, slaves are going to use work slowdown, sabotage of tools. They're going to escape. Some of them, especially towards um, closer to the Civil War. You'll see more escapes. Denmark Vesey and Nat Turner are going to be two famous rebellions. They're going to start two famous rebellions. Um, the rebellions gave hope, made slave codes worse. And it shows the evil of slavery. A lot of people, if you didn't live in the South or you didn't own slaves or you know, weren't around it, you didn't know what it was. That's what's going to be such a the huge deal about um, Harriet Beecher shows Uncle Tom's Cabin is because it brings slavery into the homes of everyone. Uh, because, you know, it's kind of like, if I don't see it, I don't know it exists kind of thing. Um, but the book will bring it home. Life of a Slave. It's going to vary, you know, um, the slave owners, their personality is going to definitely take an effect on how they treated their slaves. Now, most... I mean, in general, slaves were not treated well, okay? Um, they were not educated. They did not have freedom. They were sold. They were, you know, they were separated from their families. Um, there were slave codes and laws, things that they could or could not do. Um, a lot of them were physically beaten. I mean, a lot of them. Now, not all slave owners did that, but brutality is definitely um, needs to be discussed among slavery. Okay. Um, they did, however, it's a unique thing that the African American slaves were able to do despite the brutality and the um, injustices, they were able to keep a sense of community and sense of family and religion among themselves. So it enabled them to get through this. Okay. Um, not that it was, you know, it was horrible. So immigrants, there's going to be a surge of immigrants as well between 1830 and 1860 because of cheap ocean travel and famines and revolutions in Europe. Okay, growing reputation that the U.S. was full of opportunity. Uh, the Irish and the Germans will be th this particular big wave of immigrants that come through. 
um, we're going to see what is called nativism or nativists. These are U.S. born citizens that fear immigrants. And their biggest reason is because they fear they take, they will take their jobs. Okay. Um, and it is a form of prejudice. Okay. But so it's going to be also be the first time we're going to see, you know, actually this children that were born in America. So, you know, there is that difference. The West, and we're talking about from Mississippi River to California and up to Oregon. Native Americans, of course, were being pushed out. The Sioux will be probably the most problematic that we find. They take, um, they were warriors that fought on horseback. They're going to fight back. This is called the frontier, the Western frontier. Life on the frontier was not easy. You work from sunup to sundown. And I mean, you had to work for everything. I mean, it wasn't like you just took a trip out West. I mean, you got in a wagon and you had to make it with wooden wheels. You had to make it somewhere and there wasn't a house built. You didn't just move in. You had to make it. So, you know, life was not fun. And mal malnutrition was a huge problem. Life expectancy went way down uh, because of the harsh conditions and, you know, having to live off the land and diseases. I mean, you're going somewhere else. Farmers didn't really know what they were doing. So they exhausted the soil. And they're going to kill off the forest because they're going to chop down everything in sight. So, another issue. Um, but this is what they're going to identify with. Now, back to sectionalism really quick. The North and South and West, we talked about, they lived differently. And some of those issues are going to bring about huge debates in politics, okay? Nationalism is going to be replaced or like morphed, changed uh, into sectionalism, into identifying with your part or your portion of the United States because that's how you lived and they lived so differently. And it could be argued today uh, that this could be an issue. So just think about that. Um, and we'll pick up where we left off next time with Andrew Jackson.